Yo, what's up, guys? Welcome to uh, Silver to Zerg. Oh my God, Silver to Zerg, Silver Two. Here we go, dude. You're ready. We got ourselves uh, similar to what we're doing last year, like last video in Silver League. It's gonna all be. It's gonna basically just be more examples of it. We'll t we'll talk more about individual things that happen throughout the games. But, uh, yeah, we're just going to be talking a lot about what is going on with everything that we're seeing. So, first things first, we're going to keep making drones. We're going to make our, we're gonna go 13 Overlord, and then we're going to keep making drones, all that good jazz. Let's go ahead and take our Overlord, and we're going to move it to the natural. Hold shift and move it to the uh, high ground. You can hold shift again and hit hold position. So, it'll hold position once it's over that. That's fine. This is nice. <laughs> That's nice. Thanks for the new B2GM. Yo, Static, thank you very much for the 25. I appreciate you, man. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, dude. But much love. Thank you, man. Okay, let's um, go ahead and make a hatchery. Okay, let's go ahead and... Uh, Make our thingy thingy. Bye bye, bet Pilipili. He couldn't win a Masters game if he went out from the keyboard for 20, then 30, then 45. Begot Pig. He won all of them. He took my money up to 1 minute and 45 seconds. Still winning. We are going for 2 minutes next weekend. I'm down $70. AFK still won. He gave a diamond three guy. The diamond guy three mins still won. We suck. Yeah. Well, Pilly Pilly's, or, uh, Pilly, uh, you know where I would put Pilly Pilly? This is where I would put Pilly Pilly. This is, this is a conversation that's carrying over from my Twitch channel, guys, so people on YouTube. People are curious about how good people are in this game and stuff like that. And Pilly Pilly is someone who is, a uh, an active pro gamer right now in this game. Pilly Pilly is, like, on the... In the terms of how I broke down the game before, okay, oh, hold on. I don't, this is such a god damn it, Sir Game more. You, I don't want to talk about this. This is such a distracting thing to talk about at this point. It ruined my video now because I'm gonna get caught up in this forever, and we're gonna talk about things that people don't understand. So uh, just to give you guys a quick rundown of what the hell is even being spoken about, people ask me, "Vibe, what do you think the league ranges are?" If you had to break, like, I, I broke down Starcraft two into three leagues of what I think they are, realistically. Bronze to plat is beginner. Diamond to top 50, uh, diamond all the way up to top 50 GM is intermediate, and top 50 GM and, up, and uh, pros in general is advanced. And the reason why is because I think there is just as much of a difference between a bronze player and a platinum player as I think there is between GM rank 50 and GM rank 1. And there's just as much of a difference between bronze and plat as there is between the start of diamond and getting to top 50 GM. Like, it's literally... Players do the same exact thing in these leagues. It's just like, for instance, a platinum player and a bronze player do the same exact thing. The only difference is a platinum player is more efficient at it. A diamond player and a top 50, up to top 50 GM player do the same thing. The only difference is a GM player who's like rank 72 or 65 or rank 150, those guys do it better than the guy in diamond. But they do, they're the same kind, kind of player. They, they do the same shit. And a player who is... Um, like rank 47 and a player who is rank 1 they also do the same thing it's just the rank 1 player does it better that's the whole point I'm trying to make here that's why he's talking about why Pilly Pilly is in this list and Pilly Pilly on this list is probably around uh, like top 10 GM material He's not number one in the world, but he's definitely close. I just want to see my name he's like, in the Zerg video. He's like in the upper Smile, category. Thanks for B2GM. Yo, thank you very much. Good AK. Thank you, man. Much love. I mean, he's a GM player, so he's definitely in the top category. He's like top 16, top 10, somewhere around there. So, yeah. Thanks for getting one more <laughs> for the bits, dude. And uh, thanks, Code AK, for the dollar dono. Much love. Okay, so... So, not to go through a tangent anymore. Sorry, guys, that are uh, like, Vibe, what the hell are we even talking about? Am I supposed to learn StarCraft or what, you got story time? We're talking about your, your games now with Silver, okay? Promise. So, we're going to take a third base, right? We're taking a third base. We're going to make like six roaches. Same shit as we've been doing before. 
Same shit we've been doing before. Also, I should have built the spine crawler. He never built the natural, so I fucked that up. Uh, Sergei Remorse's fault. Not my fault. <laughs> okay. And now... Uh, yep. We're gonna get another queen so we can creep spread. And let's put this queen near the hatchery. Let's actually do one more creep timber and then do it. And we're making drones right now, guys. Why are we making drones? Because this is our build. This is how the build just kind of goes. We made safety roaches. Now we're going to try and saturate our third base. Now, a lot of people that would be playing this game right now that would actually be in server league would be like, this guy didn't expand, though, vibe. We're going to die right now. And my argument to you would be, I don't. I, you'll probably be fine. Probably. Do I think you're guaranteed not going to die? No. But there's no guarantees at all in this game. There's always randomness in this game that can happen. Where, like, if you miss a scout on something, then you could die for that. So, don't panic. If you lose, you lose. It happens sometimes. But chances are you're going to win much higher than if you lose in this situation. Because if you play efficient versus somebody who plays not efficient, you're probably going to win. Okay. So, we're still making drones? Okay. I'm under attack. Oh, you dropped my mineral line. Okay, so let's A-move my, my shit here. And now, since he's here, let's start making some army. Let's start making army now that he's in my base. I'm starting to make army. Let's also make a queen. We can rally my uh, my hatcheries all to the main base. And do I care right now? Not not a single bit. I don't care one bit. What I'm doing right now is I'm making roaches, and I'm macroing my bases properly. So let's fix that main that base. Let's take another base because we're fully saturated. How's my main going? I think we're looking pretty decent. More roaches are being made. I think we'll probably be fine now. Uh, the, the drop is, is over. So let's fix drones now. Right, Rally all my drones to my main base. And make drones. Let's make an inject. Make an inject. Make an inject. Pair this with spinning our larva. And spinning our creep. Spreading our creep. Spreading our creep. Spreading our creep. So did I just die right there? Definitely not. And am I really far ahead now? I would say most definitely yes. I'm already fully saturated on the base he just killed all my drones on. And we're, that means we're fully saturated on 66 drones. We are cruising with an economy right now. This guy won base to me. So this feels great. No need to panic, guys. If I would, You know what would have happened if I would have lost there? It would have been a situation where I could have said to myself, well, I probably just hes hesitated way too much and I didn't macro very well. Literally. Because I'm going to tell you guys right now, like, going one base all in, and then that's what the one base all in was, that's not the most efficient one base all in you could do. Uh, if you ever do a one base all in where your whole attack needs to go through a medevac, it's already kind of a slow timing. Uh, anyway, th this, we don't have to get, we don't, again, we don't have to get too technical about that concept. Let's not, let's not tangent too hard here and talk about, like, what a proper composition looks like yet. That comes later. But the whole point is... Here's another point. If someone's going to one base all on you and they're going to build five depots in their base and wall off their base, this is already an inefficient one base all in. This is such a... Like, you don't want to wait for a long time to let your opponent's economy kick in if you're going to one base all in them. You don't want to wait that long. That's such a long time to wait. And so he did, what he did was this was a situation where I played greedy, he played all in, and it was one of them's done efficiently, the other one's done inefficiently, and then the one that's done efficiently just trounced the one that wasn't done efficiently. I just destroyed it in seconds. That's all it is. Efficiency beats not efficiency, guys. So now we're at 120 supply, so let's go ahead and make drones up to 85. Let's also go ahead and expand again, because this hatchery is going to saturate really fast now. Spread our creep while we do that, because we also just injected. Spread our creep. Spread that creep. Spread that creep. Spread that creep. Inject again. Hold shift and inject again. Hold shift, inject again. Hold shift, inject again. Drone count. Now 86. We're good to go. Let's make a couple of gases up here. Let's also start a infestation pit here and transfer some drones. That way we can go into... Uh, what's it called? Uh, a hive tech. Now we're going to go into mass hydras, guys. And now that we're going mass hydras, we're going to max out pretty fast here. Because our supply is cruising here. Let's have one roach attack one side of the map and one, ro one roach attack the other side of the map. Okay, we're making hydras. Just making hydras. Making hydras. 
Let's grab this queen that made a lot of creep tumors and have it become an injector for your base. Let's fix this base. Fix this base again. Yeah. Don't be like Micro Mike. Don't be like Micro Mike. Yeah, don't be like Micro Mike. Micro is not what we're ready for yet, guys. And I feel like Platinum players would understand that more if they... Uh, or people that are around Platinum or below would understand that more if they actually got to a point where they were higher with, with uh, Macro. So now we just maxed out. We actually maxed out at 10 minutes and 20 seconds. Or, or like 10 minutes and like 17. We maxed out a little bit faster than we ideally wanted to, right? So now that we're maxed and we already scouted the guy's bases, let's go ahead and A move. The natural, then a move like the outside the door, then go into the natural, a move the doorway of the main ramp area, and then a move into the main base. Now behind this, what are we gonna do? Inject, 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 and inject, inject. Spread creep. Spread creep. Spread creep. Spread creep. I can't spread creep. I don't have vision, so I'll come back to it later. Spread creep. Spread creep. Spread creep. Drone count. 84. Make one more. We're good to go again. And make hydras. And we're maxed again. In a second. Transfer drones. Transfer drones. Drones are good. And we're good. So, GG. A little bit of a faster max is really all we did there. Just like then, then our... Then our a little bit of an average faster max is all we really changed here. And we also scouted the natural to understand the idea of the, our opponent's build, more or less. Like, just to see, what are they going for? Is it one base? Is it two base? Are they expanding or not? What is, What is the deal here? <laughs> okay, so I'm just trying to give this guy some helpful information if he, if he cares. <laughs> I mean, it sounds weird that I'm advertising my own series, but at the same time, if this guy has no idea. King Ed. Hope <laughs> okay, so he didn't say anything. He, he didn't say anything, and then he left the game. So I don't actually know if he wants to watch that or if he's like, ah, fuck this guy. Fucking Smurf. <laughs> I don't know. I'm, but, it, yo. Uh, King Ed, if you actually watch the series... 100% dude, it'll help you so much. Uh, it helps everybody because it helps you understand what it, you're supposed to actually do in the game, right? And now again, let's talk about that for a second. Let's talk about it for a second. Okay, so game starts, right? And here we go. This is a situation where one player goes for an expansion and one player goes for one base double gas tech. So there's, uh, you know what I mean? There's there's less emphasis on economy and there's more emphasis on economy. So you can see right here, and the look, look at this. Already at four minutes, right? We're already doubling the economy of uh, mostly. Like the gas is a bit higher for the Terran, but definitely the minerals are a lot higher for us. We're a thousand above. <coughs> so we are cruising with a lot of extra income, which is why the supply is going to grow at such a fast pace for us over the Terran player. And then we'll go, we'll speed it up now. And you guys all understand this concept. It's the same exact thing we've been talking about all throughout bronze. And it, er, so far in early silver, we're still doing it, which doesn't ever go away. And then this, the culmination of the, uh, of the, of the build of Terran, right? Where the Terran's still on 20 SCVs. This is brutal for the Terran. The Terran, the, the, I say this all the time. This puts the Terran in a, posi in a position now where if you over invest into aggression and you don't invest at all into economy, this now puts this attack into a position where at the very least you have to kill 36 drones just to even the game out. That's just to even the game out. 
And that's and then here's the thing: when you're more of an advanced player, you actually understand that doesn't even that doesn't even actually make 100 percent sense either, because the game wouldn't even even if 36 drones died, it still wouldn't even be an even game because I already have a third base set up, and the Terran, and I, which means not only do I have a natural and a third base that are done, but I, Terran, the Terran player doesn't have a done natural yet, so he's actually even further behind than if you were to kill just 36 workers. So. That is why, like, this, th it just puts a lot of pressure on this to do a lot of damage. At the very, like, to, to make this game feel good for, for uh, Terran here, at the very least, he would need to kill two fully saturated economies. He would also need to kill my supply all the way down to what his is. And, and then I, and then also look at my bank, right? And then he'd also have to kill even more than just that to also deplete my bank to match his bank, which means he'd have to chew through about 800 resources. It's fucking rough when you put yourself in this kind of a position. And what does it actually get done? Let's see. Again, this is just a move, right? All my units are out of position. We a move. I grab drones. I a move. Drones and roaches don't even go together at the same time. And I start making roaches behind this. Yo, Greg, thank you for the five. These videos are making me a better teacher. Five SD, five SD, five SD. Thank you very much, Greg. Hell yeah. I'm glad it's helping you do it in more ways than one. And now, uh, you know, now the, the drop is still going, right? You're like, oh damn, Vibe, you are taking some damage. So far, the Terran player has killed. Uh, you've lo The Terran player has uh, only lost 700 resources, and Zerg's lost 1,900. Terran's lost 5 units, Zerg's lost 28. You f it feels great, right? You're like, oh damn, this attack is getting damage done. It t in terms of resources kill or workers killed, I've lost 19 workers. It's misleading when you don't when you do attacks like this. It's misleading when you do attacks like this and you go, "I did a lot of damage." It makes you feel good about it, right? You're like, "Okay, I destroyed that guy right there. My my drop was definitely worthwhile. I did a lot of damage there." Oh. But the yeah. only reason why it did damage was because. I'm playing. Love the series. Yo, Duke, thank you very much for the, the 25. I appreciate it, man. Thank you, thank you. Uh, the only reason why it does so, so much damage, where it kills 1,900 resources worth of stuff of mine and also uh, 19 workers. Back Hold when on. quarantine started, I would lay in bed and eat a jar of peanut butter while watching your 2019 B2GM series. It's important to me that you know this. Much love and keep up the good work. <laughs> no worries. Yo, Jenkins, next time I have peanut butter. I'm going to be thinking Jenkins is probably having some peanut butter too. Oh, yeah. He's maybe even watching a video. Jenkins, thank you very much for the two, man. Much love. And uh, that's beautiful. Thank you, man. Um, but what uh, – so what it puts the – so this position again, right? The reason why it does so much damage – like it did a lot of damage, guys. 19 workers dying and 1,900 resources going down already. That's definitely good for Terran. But it's, oh, it's expected as well for Terran to kill something. If I go extremely greedy – and Terran goes extremely all in to like aggr super aggressive because even if I lose an entire main base and I'm on three fully saturated bases, if the Terran is on one base and not even yet on a second, I could still lose my entire main base and still be ahead because it's a fully saturated natural and third versus just one base saturation of Terran. Does that make sense? Like I could literally lose this whole base and still be ahead. If I lost this whole base too, and it put me down to one base, and now he's on two, well then I'm behind. But if I lose, if I were to somehow lose my entire main base, I would totally get fucked for that. Or uh, sorry, I would I would be fine. It would hurt, but I would be fine. I would be able to recover from that. Um, but the hard part now is again look at the income, guys. That income is still in favor of Zerg heavily, and now look at production. I can just pump units all day until this attack is dead. I can throw bodies at the problem. It's all about macro. It's not about how you use your units yet. It's about how you make your units. I can take a horrible fight where I lose horribly bad, no micro at all, and yet I still am in a situation where I, after losing 19 workers and 1,900, supply, 1900 resources of, of supply in total, where I'm actually still basically doubling, almost doubling, not quite, but almost doubling supply of my opponent, and my worker count is still more than double my opponent's economy. This is rough. This is hard to come back from. Another queen died. So it's another group of resources that are dead for me. Brutal. But it doesn't matter. No, I have another queen already being made. And it's popping out before the injective even finishes. 
And then what do I do? Brand new inject for the hatcheries. Brand new inject for the hatcheries. Brand new inject for the hatcheries. And suddenly, look at the supply now. We are actually more than double. So now from here, you. This is when when you look at, when you when you if you ever see like a caster or like a high level player at StarCraft call a game before it's actually over, and like you're like let's just say you're like a gold player or something, and you're watching a StarCraft like GSL stream or something, and like tasteless or toastless are like, well guys, at this point, we're watching a lion eat a gazelle. It's not that good for the Terran player anymore, and everyone's like, don't call a game so early. He's not dead yet. He's pretty fucking dead, guys. The opener of this game is already set in stone now. Like, there's no way he gets out of this. He's so far behind that I will max out by the time he's only at, like, 80 supply. It, it, this, is where, like, this is why your early game sets the pace for your late game so fucking hard. And you have to know how to make a good economy. If you don't know that, if you don't prioritize that... You get yourself in situations like this versus someone who does do that, and you just die. <laughs> okay. And now the supply is cranking like crazy. We, we're done droning. So now... Look at the economy now, and again, you think it looks oh, good. It looks good for Terran here, right? This, again, this is where this is always the misleading one. Like, the, I I feel like people who show this, if like you ever try to teach someone how to play StarCraft Two, off of resources lost, it's only a part of the story. It's not the whole story. So, then this is usually what people who micro and heavily like intensely. This is the little piece of information the replay they always focus on. What's the resources lost though? How efficient were you at microing that? And it's like, well, Terran, dude, you did so good. You killed three times the amount of units that you that died for you. You killed that much. You killed 30. You lost 10. And you also, you you know, more than double the resources lost was accrued for, uh, for the Zerg. And you only lost half that. A little bit less than half. That's really good. Terran's winning this game. But is he? Because even though I only lost, yeah, I lost 1,200 resources. 1,200 resources, right? I lost 1,200 resources throughout 9 minutes and 30 seconds and counting. I've only lost 1,200 more resources than Terran in terms of things that we killed each from each other. I'm 1,200 down in that regard. But again, I'm mining more than 1,200 than he is per minute. So if we have, again, this is the, the, the perfect term I love to use here where it's like, like I'll give you a visual really fast because I think it's, it's perfect for this. So check this out. If the, if, the, if the left one is me and the right one is Terran, okay, and what does this mean? It's total resources mined. And let's say the Terran throughout this whole game so far has mined 9,500 resources total. He's mined 9,500 in total this whole game. And I have mined uh, 24,500 resources. And how did I get that number? Because it's what these are per minute. And it, it's obviously not been this since the very start of the game. But it, it's been almost 10 minutes in this game. And we'll, we'll, we'll say 20, okay? We'll say 20K. That's fine. It doesn't matter. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. We're just estimating. It's just estimations. But here's the point, okay? Here's the point. If I've mined... This is what we start with, okay? This is what you've mined. This is what you have mined. The Terran player on the right side has now lost how much? 950. Okay, so we're going to remove about... Literally exactly one-tenth of that. So we'll try and do like what one-tenth would seem like right there. So that's probably like one-tenth. So now that's red. One-tenth of that is now red. That's Terran's now new economy. That's what he... That's what... Ultimately, that's what his takeaway is like in terms of everything that still exists in the, in the game for him. That's what he still has. For us, we've lost 2150, which is also just about one-tenth of that. And one-tenth of this one is about... Right here, I would say. And that means our red is right there. Which means overall, our total is still way fucking bigger because we have made so much more money over, like throughout the game. We've mined so much more. So our mountain of resources is just larger. And we can take a larger loss than Terran, but at the end of the day, 
we still we have mined so much more than he does that it, we we could take a loss that's even like twice as big. We could take a loss that's like okay, well now we instead of losing twenty fifty, we lose uh, forty three hundred. So now we're like down to here, and it's like well okay, vibes really taking losses now, but I'm still way ahead. I'm still nowhere even close to nine k yet. For me to get to nine k, I would have to lose like ten thousand resources worth of units. Which is, is not even close to happening right now, right? It's not even close to happening uh, at the moment. That's that's how much pressure was put on that tank medevac drop with with Marines covering it. Like, they needed to kill 10,000 fucking resources worth of units. And they only managed to get 2,000. And that was still a good drop because he killed fucking 30 units to losing 10. That was still... The drop itself was good. But the economy set up into that drop was bad because it puts so much more pressure on that drop. That's the point I'm trying to make here. So, like, he already got a good drop. He needed to have a godlike drop, essentially. Oh, and yeah. And that, that's very unlikely to happen, right? It's very unlikely to happen. So, hopefully that makes sense, that concept. It's just about overall money throughout the game that you're you're making. Total income. And now we, uh, we attack with roaches, and we're checking where the bases are, and we see no bases. He actually throws them down right after I leave, which is pretty clever. Uh, but then, you know, by the time we go, yeah, okay, you know what? Time to attack. What did I say? By the time we max out, he'll be at 80 supply, right? And he's at 77 when we max out. And why why do I know that? Why can I kind of guess that kind of a situation is going to happen? It's because his economy is so far behind. His economy is so far behind that I can guarantee that I will be maxed out by the time he's around 80 supply. He's super far behind. Even though he took a better trade up to that point in the game, he's so far behind. And now you can't do much here. You just die. It's all about economy. You can still use battlecruisers and tanks and marines and all that shit, and it's fine. But it's all about the economy. Another example. Example. Oh my god, we're still on this subject? Yes. We're in silver. They're taking a while to get through. Agreed. But I mean, I, I can't stream 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. That's uh, That'd be rough. There you go. Uh, Twitch chat's getting impatient again. Okay, same thing again, guys. Uh, guys, you think I'm gonna do anything different? Do you think I'm gonna do anything different? Because if you do, I'm not. <coughs> why am I not gonna do anything different? Because I don't think you can handle it yet. That's why. I know you better than you know yourself, Silver Player. And if you're a Silver Player watching this, and you think you can just go watch a Masters video and do that right now, yeah, I mean, I, by all means, you can try. I'm not gonna say not do that. You can, by, by all means, you can click on the go. You know what? I'm gonna skip forward like 15 videos and go to the Masters stuff instead. Go for it. If you really, if you feel that confident, go for it. But just know that if you don't end up having success with Masters style gameplay, you're more than welcome to come back here and progress like you normally should. <laughs> Okay, we're going to take our gas. We're going to scout the natural. And then we're going to shift move to the cliff. Also, here's a tip, okay? T quick tip for uh, players out there that are Zerg. This overlord is not actually where the overlord is, okay? This overlord, it's, it's not based off... Even though it's an air unit, it's not actually... There's no uh, Z-axis grid here in this game, which means it's not a grid for air units. It's like with taxes, rich people still have lots more to pay than me. Even though they lose more, they still have lots more than us, lol. So good. we focus on macro to make more money. Yes, you do. Exactly. Thank you very much, Scottish Bob. Thank you, man. That's very true, yeah. Uh, I mean, you can take bigger losses if you have a bigger uh, bank account to work with, and you're fine. So anyway, what I was saying about this is, this is not actually where the air unit's located, guys. Look at the circle underneath it. 
It's actually located right there. That's where it really is. We'll talk a lot more about that when we start microing our units, but here's why it's relevant to this. If you want to hide an overlord over a cliff, you do this. This is a perfect overlord over the cliff right here. Even though his fucking body is not there, his circle is perfectly right there. Do not be the guy that does this. I'm hiding over the cliff now. Because you're not. Your circle's there and you're totally fucking sticking your ass over the side. That is over the cliff right there. So make sure you know that. That's why also if I tell the overlord to go right here, look what it does. It goes right there. It's not a bug and you're not like, wait, why is the main guy not coming down to where I'm telling him to go? It's because he is there because it's based off the circle. Okay, so this guy didn't expand. How so make us my color. Drones? Five what? SD, dude. Thank you very much, Lion Musica. Or Leo Musica. Thank you, thank you. Five SD, boy. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, so we're massively supply blocked this game. That's okay. B2 GM took me from silver two to plat three. Hoping to hit that plat one with the next round of macro training. Praise the macrotron. Hell yeah. I believe in you. Vibe, I'm personally feeling attacked right now. Good. This is the this is the dojo of improvement. Like if if, if you're in my dojo and you go, but sensei, but senpai, I can macro like the best of them. This is, that's when I I break your fingers. No, you can't macro now, tough guy. And then you have to wait till they heal for your insolence to start practicing again. fucking hard on my students okay let's make like six roaches we're good Vibe. why can some people get Masters League after like only three months of playing the game because everyone's brain is different and they all approach the game differently in terms of how they understand shit and some people don't need to be told macro is important they just understand it by playing the game and go Oh wow, I can play this game way more efficiently if I just macro. But some people they basically some people are able to understand what's important through their own experiences and some people are able to understand what's important through someone else's experiences. And whenever you here's the scary thing. Whenever you understand what's important through someone else's experiences, you don't actually know how they got there. You didn't have the experience that they did to get there in the first place. So if you go, oh, I'm Silver League, and Micro is what I see everyone do that's good at this game, so it's Micro. Well, they also Macro. You just don't see it because they're so good at it. And if you don't know how to read that as a lower level player, well, you're going to be lower level for a long time because you think that's what's good, but you can't even handle it yet and you don't realize it because you don't think about it that way. Everyone thinks about shit differently. So there's no one that, like, there's no people that go, I have the exact same thought process that someone else has. That's why some people can just understand shit on their own faster versus others. I feel like people that will pick up StarCraft 2 faster just by default are people that usually don't seek others' advice for anything and they do things themselves. They're self-sufficient. Those will be people that will probably self-sufficiently understand the game faster. If you want my honest, like, guess. But it doesn't even, it's not even, not even like, 100% true in, in everything. It really just depends. It just depends. Is really what it comes down to. No lings? Yeah, we're not making lings in the series right now, guys. Lings are fucking advanced. I'm just going to throw it out there and say this right now. For a long long answer given shortly. Lings require micro. And we're not microing. Lings require micro. If you don't micro and you have lings, your build sucks balls. Dead serious. Like, your build is fucking garbage if you make lings and you do nothing with them. You have to do shit with your lings. And if you tell a silver player to do shit with his lings, he's just going to get distracted and do nothing and then not macro. Or he's going to overuse the lings and then not macro. And then his build's going to suck again. And he's going to not macro at all. He's going to fall apart. And be like, why am I always losing games? Because my opponent has like 50 more supply than I do for no reason. And a silver player, honestly, might not even think about it like that. They might just go, why am I always losing games, period. And not go, oh, it's because I have no supply. Like, re just realistically, like, links are advanced. They're not something you should be fucking doing right now. Have you guys ever heard of the saying, the blind lead the blind? 
I feel like that's what it's like sometimes whenever I hear people that are lower league recommend shit like that to other lower league players. Like, yeah, just do some link builds. I'm just like, oh god. <laughs> These guys are gonna struggle for fucking years. <laughs> like, again, have fun with the game, right? But there's reasons why I don't show you guys micro in low league. I've said it 500 times already in like every video, I feel like. Don't fucking micro when you can't even macro. Because, guys, again, I, I feel like I always have to say this, too. And I, I'm going to say it one more time. Just know, when I, say, when, I, when I say don't micro when you can't macro, if you can, mic if you can macro faster than me, that's great. Awesome. That's wonderful. But just to throw it out there, I'm not even macroing as fast as Zerk can macro right now. Not even fucking close. <laughs> we're getting faster every league, but we're still under par. Anyways, I'm not going to get... I, I feel like I'm getting distracted by chat a little bit too much right now. Uh, go back to teaching you guys properly again instead of reaming chat people. Um, okay, so our opponent's been attacking us with some voids and some adepts, which is fine. We lost another queen. Just remake it. It's all good. Make some more hydras. Uh, okay, I, kinda, I might have maxed out a little bit too fast this game. I was a little bit distracted, so I played it at a faster oh, pace. Like, look at this. I'm already maxed out at nine minutes. And I uh, even had a shitty early game where I was supply block for like two minutes. Okay, so let's go ahead and inject, 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 inject. Inject, inject, inject. Uh, that's good. Where's our other queen? Oh, I am not, I think it died to voids or something, so we'll make another one. Macro makes me wet. <laughs> okay, let's go ahead and um, grab, a, grab a couple of roaches and go A move, shift A move across the map. Another roach on this side, A move, shift A move across the map. Good to go. We're going to wait until they spot where the bases are. Okay, we can make more creep with the creep timbers that we have. Okay, let's get a hive. Oh, we already have a hive. Let's get 2-3 started. President of France, Macron. Governor General of Jamaica, Sir Patrick Hall in. Who would win a war between the two? Coincidence? I think not. Yes. We, uh, I'm gonna vote for the macro guy, Sir Macron. Uh. Okay. So now we see where our opponent is. We see his b latest base. Let's go ahead and A move it on that side of the map with all of our army. Shift A move, shift A move. Shift A move. Whatever happens, happens. You want to know why? What's more important? What's more important, guys? Macroing is more important, is what it is. I don't care if my army dies. I hope my army dies, because that way I can show you how I can remax in two seconds. Look at my money, and like I'm not gonna I'm not gonna touch my larvae yet. I'm not even gonna touch the larvae yet. Let's see if this guy has enough to kill this army. I was trying to make a point here, again, of macro. So supply is dropping a little bit more. But look at my look at these hatcheries. 15, 8, 6, 3, 15. Multiply that by... Add these all together and then multiply that by 2. And that's how much supply I can remake in a snap of a finger. And it continues to go up as well because we're still injecting our hatcheries. So look at this. Again. Right? If my army were to die, let's just hypothetically say, oh my god, Vibe, you lost your whole army in that attack. Whoa, dude, wowzers. Vibe dead. And you're like, damn, Vibe just lost a uh, hundred supply right there. Okay. I can just be like, oh, okay, let's, uh, let's remax. pretty good right and suddenly the entire army that would have died is already out again and literally like two seconds of macro because you can just if you set up macro you can make it your life so much easier at controlling games 
And that, again, that's mandatory to be able to control games at a higher level. That's the whole point. Everyone, everyone's... I always see people just so carried away constantly with like, I gotta micro! I need to micro! It's like a fucking itch! Again, you... You're more than welcome to micro as much as you want. But if you, if you... If I was sitting next to you and you wanted my advice and you literally asked the question, How can I get better at this game faster? Don't fucking micro before you can handle it. Don't do that. It's like, you know what... It, let me tell you what it feels like in a second. Vibe, how do you stop someone just being really fucking bad at this game? Thank you, Beast Mode. And Psychosaurus, thank you for the 100 bitties as well. Thank you guys both for 100 bits. Yeah, it's big brain time. Let me, I'm, I'm going to tell you something really fast, okay? This is, this, is, I, I, this is honest opinion, okay? Listen to it. Whatever... People who are platinum or below keep request. Like I'm gonna say this in this series, platinum. I I might start microing a little bit in platinum, maybe a tiny bit, but it's not gonna be much. It's gonna be very basic, if anything at all. Okay. But whenever I hear people in platinum and below, always ask, "Well, how? Do, uh, we, I want to be microing oh, this. I want to micro that. I want to yeah. micro this. I want to micro that." I'll tell you in a second. Thank you, Tara, for the uh, 49 month resub. the content. Thanks for being a boss. Thank you, Tara. Much love. Thank you. Thank you. Uh. When a lower level player asks about micro, I always when I when I say no, it's like this is the analogy I have in my mind that's super simple to and understand understand. It's almost like you have like a grown up telling a kid, Don't put your hand in fire, fire's hot. And the kid goes, But I wanna and you go, No, don't do it, it will hurt you. Just like how micro will hurt you if you're low league. And then the kid does it, he burns his hand and he's like, Ow Okay. He kind of now understands why you said don't do it, but then he'll fucking do it again, and he'll do it again. He'll like he'll just keep fucking doing it. He keeps like putting his hand in fire. It's like what is wrong with you? <laughs> stop fucking mac, stop microing, and start macroing, and then suddenly you'll be able to handle more advanced shit. So it's it, yeah, it's just it's one of those things where I I don't I, some people I just can't convince. And that's why exactly, the, it's a perfect re uh, reflection on the other point someone made earlier, just a second ago, that said, Vibe, why is it that some people can play this game for like three months and be masters? It's because those people respect the concept. When you say, don't put your hand in fire, they go, okay, I won't do that until I'm actually ready for it. Until I can actually know what the fuck I'm doing with that. And then, like, they'll know how to, like, actually extinguish a fire, like, like snap the wick or something, or blow on the fire, put it out, put a fucking... The, take air away from it like put a blanket over it uh put water on it like you want you like you understand the concept of how to eliminate fire but a player who's not ready for that yet will just fucking put their hand in it and let it melt their hand and be like ah ah <clears throat> All right. So, anyways, moving on. <laughs> Same thing again, guys. As always, we're scouting. We're a moving. Look at the supply. It's really fat and huge for Zerg, right? And again, this game was started off with like it was legit like a thirty-five second supp supply block because we were talking about something else in the beginning of the game. I'm getting really distracted by what Twitch keeps asking me. Uh, sorry, I know it might be detracting from the video, but I mean the video is the same thing as it was before It's just more efficient of what we were already doing like when I say more efficient. I just mean This is all I mean. Okay, I, so I don't want to this is actually something I need you to listen to really fast Okay, so you, you know what the hell I mean When I say all we're doing is we're playing more efficient All I'm doing is I'm not leaving that open-ended to say we're just gonna play the game overall at a uh, you know Stronger it's a silver two pace now instead of a silver three pace Like you might not understand what that means and to elaborate on what that means It means if it on average on average if it took me 25 seconds to inject my hatcheries and Spread my creep 25 seconds. Just we're throwing a number out there. Okay, the uh, the goal the the idea is in silver three it took 25 seconds in silver two it's gonna take 24 seconds to do that so we like we're slowly getting faster and more comfortable with the tasks at hand. That's all it means. We're just getting more confident in all the tasks that we're doing. We're speeding them up because we're fat, we're, we're we're more comfortable with it, which in turn is making us do something like 
max out a little bit faster. It's the whole point of what I'm saying. Like if you're if you're able to do everything you need to do a little bit quicker and more efficient with time, it means you can do things like max your build out faster. It's all it's all it is. It's all it is. Okay, well watch this. Oh, he, he already left. What are we talking about? He's already dead. He had like no supply when I showed up, so he was just super dead. And yeah, he didn't have a natural, guys. He didn't have a natural. There was no natural at the start of that game, so I made a spine crawler. And yet, he never attacked me early, really. Uh, he attacked me with, like, a proxy adept at, like, four and a half minutes. Like, four to four and a half minutes. Again, if you're taking almost, like, four and a half minutes to attack someone on one base, that timing attack is very delayed. If you're going to go for a... Adept attack in someone's mineral line off of one base. You need to be in their base by like fucking two minutes Not four and a half And how do I know that because I know what time means in Starcraft 2 because I've done I've gone through the road of efficiency I've gone through the road of macro a long time ago myself Like I know what efficiency is in this game it's, You will too as well if you just work on it everybody will There's, it's not like it's like oh my god only vibe gets to know this there's a lot of people who know this. And the people who know this are people that, re you know, respect macro. They respect it. To at least a degree. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yes. Yes. So, guys, again, this is Silver 2. Zerg, right? We're working our way. We're gonna ha like every league is taking forever, right? So, so the Diamond leagues are gonna be the same. The Masters leagues are gonna be the same. We're like slowly crawling the MMR up. We're not losing constantly or anything like that. It's just our MMR is like getting stuck in low league forever. Um, okay, there's a insta leave, insta leave. So uh, you're, you guys are gonna, you're gonna get tons of examples all the way through. I would just say just be a little bit patient. With, if you're someone who's like, I'm fucking diamond. Oh, I'm enough of this yeah. silver garbage. I'll get to diamond eventually. I remember the days of getting the galing rushed in silver <coughs> league. Those were fun times. I remember the days of getting Zergling rushed in silver league. Those were fun times. Yo, thank you very much, Woodrow, for the 20. And, uh, yeah, uh, I mean, the, 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 honestly, the, like, rushes and all-ins and stuff, they never stop happening. They never stop happening. But the more solid of a player you are, the more likely you will beat those kinds of things rather than lose to those kinds of things. And that's the whole point of the series. I'm sure I'm going to get all in a lot throughout the series, and I'll show you guys how to defend all ins many times. It's going to happen a lot. We've already been all in so far in the series between all three races probably like 20 times out of like the 50 games I've played or 60 games I've played. But the only thing is, is people don't realize they're all ins, and they're, like, cause here's the thing, like, here's here's the thing. I'm gonna explain this concept again. This is I've I've said this a few times already before. I maybe not in this. I don't think I've said it in this video yet, but I've said it in other videos. <coughs> but one of the things I got told a lot by players, uh, honestly, in Platinum League, the most I would say, was this exact statement. And this might be uh, you as well. You might even be thinking this, vibe. How come in your beta gym series, you never get all in, but I do? Can you make a guide on how to defend all ins? And I go, I did get all in in my series. You just don't understand that I got all in in my series because you don't pay attention to time. And they go, and they're like, they're like, what? What do you mean? Like, you never, no one actually attacked you. Like, you didn't get all in. And I go, yes, I did. Like, for instance, the, the, the guy, the Terran guy I played and the Protoss guy I just played, those were all-ins. Anyone who sacrifices economy and puts themselves in a situation where they can't win the game anymore to uh, because they're attacking you first and then they're going to expand after and there's no chance they win the game unless they do damage to you, that is an all-in. That is what an all-in means. And the only reason why it looks like I take no damage to it is not because I max out at 15 minutes. It's because I max out at like 10 or 9. And I'm crushing the guy's macro with efficiency. And people don't pay attention to that. They don't pay attention to the fact that when we... Like here's, here, and here's the final piece of the of the pie here. If a play, like a, Let's say a Platinum player watches a video of mine and they go, Well, you didn't get all in at all. And, and then they play a game and they get all in. Maybe both games 
I get attacked and the player who's in platinum gets attacked at like five minutes and 30 seconds. But maybe at five minutes and 30 seconds, the platinum player is only at 49 supply and I'm at 67 supply. So I'm way ahead in supply and he doesn't realize that. And when the all-in shows up, I literally A move it and run it over and it's dead. And he doesn't have enough to run it over. So he actually gets whittled down and he starts dying over time and he actually loses the game. People don't think about it like that, but that's why you fucking win half the time. You just out macro somebody else through raw efficiency. So that's a uh, that's the whole goal of what I'm trying to convince you of. Like I'm trying to show you how to do it and convince you that that's what's right. Okay, so there is no expansion, guys. I mean, there's an assimilator, but there's no expansion. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a spine crawler now. This is again, guys. This is a fucking all in again. If this guy puts himself in a situation where he cannot win the game because he's so far behind in economy and I'm just over here cranking out drones, there is no chance he's going to win playing this way. Like, I already have a fully saturated base. He hasn't even started a Nexus. It is now going to start, it looks like. I don't, he's long distance mining gas. I don't, I don't know. It doesn't, again, I'm not trying to judge him. I'm not trying to be a dick and like make fun of lower level players or anything like that. That's not the goal. The goal is I'm just trying to show you what he's doing. It needs to do damage to me right now to make it worthwhile. Like I, there better be charge lots coming in my base right now. Otherwise he's dead. He has no chance if I'm not going to take any damage here because my supply is, there's the expansion, right? He just started the expansion. It's a third of the way done when I'm ready to take my third itself. So now, was what I just did super difficult? Was it like, holy fuck vibe, you just blew my mind. I don't understand how to macro like that. No, we've been doing it since Bronze 3. I've been doing this every game. It's the same build order every time. Like, again, it doesn't have to be an exact build order. It, it build order either. It's like a rough estimated, estimated build of like, we make two base saturation. We take a few roaches for defense. We saturate our third now. Then we make some hydras for defense. Then we saturate our fourth. And then we go all hydras all game. It's the whole thing. It's the same thing every single time. And right now, guys, look at this. Well, well, let's say this really fast, okay? I'm gonna I'm gonna calculate a number here. Five minutes. At five minutes, I am at 68 supply, and at five minutes, this Protoss is at 37. 37 supply for him right now. I'm already fucking guaranteeing that's what he's at. We'll come. We'll watch the replay. We'll come back to that. And if this guy is at 37 supply right now, and I'm at 68. And there's nothing that has happened this game that is just a raw fact of the of the fact that this guy has been inefficient. It's all it is. He just has not played efficiently. So I'm getting this fat lead for no reason. And this is why this guy is not ready for a higher level game. And anyone who plays anyone who plays this way is not ready because if this is so out of order, you have no chance. Get, you could you could play someone who has literally no micro capabilities at all, and they would crush you. If, they, if you get out macroed like that. Like you could have, for instance, let's just say this. Let's just say, let's say uh, every, everyone knows who like, uh, who's, who Maru is, okay? Maru is like a really top tier like pro gamer Terran player. Let's say Maru macroed against the silver player. He macroed. And he got to like 150 supply and then let his fucking little sister play who's like four years old. And she's like drooling on the mouse. And she's like, ah, and clicking randomly. And she just randomly attacks the base. She's going to win the game. No micro required because the macro wins. <laughs> oh, I already have a Hydra then. Sorry. Okay. So anyways, let's talk about the game again. So drone count wise, I need four more, right? We need four more. So we're going to make another drone here. We're going to make three more drones for the gas because I just took one off to make the gas. So I fixed that now. Let's inject our bases. Let's inject their bases. Let's inject their bases. Let's put two drones on this gas. Let's take four drones off and put one drone on this gas. Take one drone off and put it on that gas. Now we're fully saturated. Let's start two one upgrades and let's start hydras until 120. Hold down the button, essentially. While we're waiting, spread some creep. 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 And spread some creep. And spread some creep. Okay, and make hydras to 120. We're, we're there. We are there now. So now let's take our hatcheries, rally it to fourth base. We're gonna make drones again to 88 or 85 drones, 85 drones. So make drones, hold down the button. 
We can uh, transfer a couple drones here, and we can also make an infestation bit while we're at it, so we can go to a hive, so that we can go into level three upgrades. Make drones. Make drones. Make a creep tumor. 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 And creep tumor. Uh, this one's on cooldown. Okay, let's go here. Let's maybe go in the bushes because there's bushes here. And maybe make one more creep tumor in the bushes. So that way we can actually see through the bushes. There we go. And now, if you because if you put a building inside the bushes, it actually gives you vision through them. Or if you have an overlord over it, you can do it. Or if you have a vision here, you can jump that gap right there and go around it. So there's a lot of ways you can do it. But we just put a thing in the bushes because why not? Let's take another base. Drone a little bit more. And now we'll start going into mass hydras. While we take a hive tech. And we'll also inject our bases. Because we need to do that. We need to inject our bases. We need to inject our bases. And we need to inject our base. Fix our droning. Make a bunch of hydras. And we're at 154 supply already. 154 supply already. Now let's take a roach. And go A move, A move, A move. Again, what are we doing? We're checking expansions. A move, A move, A move. Checking expansions. Leave the rest at my base. And make hydras. We're getting really close. Closer and closer and closer to maxing out, guys. Let's go ahead and spread some creep again. Spread some creep. We're getting more control. Every time we do this, we're getting more control of the map. Like, the percentage of control of this map is currently already at, like, 40%. And now, when all these next creep tumors finish, it's going to be like at 44%, or like 45%. We're getting control every time we make a wave of creep. Okay. Let's inject our hatcheries. Drag my mouse around the screen. Inject our hatcheries. And now we've discovered that the Protoss is on three bases. Uh, we can start level three upgrades for weapons, and level two upgrades for range. We can transfer some drones around to a, like a new base, like over here for instance. And now let's go ahead and make a new base again because we're uh, gonna you know, have a drone problem if we don't make another base again because we're gonna fill up another base again here pretty soon because bases are mining out. Let's make go ahead and make another round of creep. Awesome. And make a few more hydras again. We're getting really close to maxing out guys. Super close to maxing out. Okay, we're injecting our hatcheries. We're injecting our hatcheries. And we can go ahead and make our final round of hydras and go ahead and go for that max. And now we go, okay, I know where he is. I know where he is. So now we can take our army and we can literally just go into his fucking base, A move the area, A move the area, A move the area. So grab it, A move, shift, A move, shift, A move. Now our army's gonna do whatever it's gonna do. Behind that, what are we gonna do? Inject. 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 If you're someone also, or you're like, good god, I'm missing injects. I, I'm missing injects like crazy. Feel free to do this. One, two, three, four. Feel free to add in some extra hatcheries. It's totally fine. Like, more larva is better than no larva. So go ahead and spread some creep. Spread some creep. Spread some creep. Spread some creep. Watch my supply right now, okay? While I'm in the middle of spreading creep and I'm not even looking at my base, I can go, oh, select my creep tumor. Spread yeah. that creep. Hit the hatchery hotkey. Hit the larva hotkey. Hold down Hydra. I'm maxed again. Okay. Make a couple gases here for our future uh, drones to transfer there. Injector hatcheries. Injector hatcheries. That needs to be fixed. Injector hatcheries. Injector hatcheries. All shift queuing up uh, the injects. Grab a bunch of drones off that hatchery and send them down to the new base I just made. Awesome. And the hydras, are, the hydras are still going down here. That's great. It's wonderful. And now we can also, if the game somehow doesn't end, we can make a lurker den like we've been talking about before. Because this thing will help a lot with uh, uh, the base trades and stuff like that if they happen to happen. Like they're really good at screwing base trade people over. So and that's why we make them. We'll use them for micro aggressively per aggressive purposes later, but for now in silver, we're not worried about being aggressive with them. We're just worrying about base trades. Okay, so our units are still attacking. That's awesome. Let's go ahead and suck the army. Let's a move the main base again, or you know what? We, let's actually a move that base because we see it, and then shift a move the main base again. Make hydras at the same time. 
Because we're these units are just sitting here doing nothing anyways, and we have a ton of bank. We could we could we have so much larva and money that we could easily remax again and again and again and again. Okay. That guy's nice. Slayer, you're a nice guy. Now let's go back. Let's go back now. And let's just talk about efficiency, right? Slayer, I, again, I, I, and people always, I don't want people to take it the wrong way too. I don't want to actually talk shit about lower level players. I'm not trying to like bash on lower level players here with in terms of like talking about why the builds are bad or whatever. I'm just trying to say <coughs> your build has a level of efficiency that it needs to go beyond certain points in this game. And if you don't have efficient builds, you'll get stuck in the, the bronze, silver, gold area forever. And maybe, maybe once in a while you'll touch plat, but you'll be stuck there forever. So check this out. Watch the supply, right? What was it? Five minutes, I said? I think it was at five minutes. I was at 68, and I said he was at like 37. He's, he's at 40. So the reason, like, again, does it have to be perfect? No, it doesn't have to be perfect. But the fact that I knew the range of what his supply was around right now is mainly because I know that I'm my build is already scaling at a faster pace than his build because this hatchery has already sucked up probably about 2,000 resources for me just from the minerals only and about 400 gas for me just off the gas. So, like, we'll just round it off. This space has sucked up about 2,500 resources for me and I can already guarantee, without even looking at it, I'll, I'll click them in a second, that these gases have probably both only mined about maybe anywhere between like 75 to 100 gas. Because all, they're also being long distance mined, which means they're being very slowly mined. So if we check it, this gas has mined, uh, that's about like 64. And this gas has mined uh, actually like 40, 44. So definitely on the low end. Definitely on the low end here for the gas mining. But here, and here's the misconception, right? Here's the misconception. A lower level player goes, I'm going to do a void ray build. What should I do to do that? Make stargates and make void rays. And I'm even going to go double cyber core. And I'm going to make upgrades, double upgrades. But the only way this works, oh, if you do this, yeah. you do all of this before you make the nexus. The only way that works PA out. checks for doing B2G M again. No worries. Thank you very much, Charlie. The only way this works out is if this attacks. So, and here's the concept, right? And I'm going to explain the concept really fast. Upgrades are terrible for all ends. Uh, and, and, and like in, in this sense, going for like weapons and armor, it's not good for all in. And the reason why is because the unit you're making is a gas expensive unit and the upgrades you're making are gas expensive upgrades. So if you're going to push really early with void rays, you'd much rather have an extra, you'd rather have an army of like six void rays that are zero, zero than three void rays that are one, one. Like, six voids at zero, 0 are going to be so much more effective than, like, three voids at one one, And that's, like, the trade-off of, like, if you're investing a bunch of your resources into these fucking upgrades, that's what's going to happen to you. You're going to have a smaller army that has upgrades. But up what, do up what do upgrades really do well, though? They scale well throughout the game. So if you're going to go for upgrades, it makes sense if you're going to make the game go longer. But if you're going to make the game go longer, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to do... Uh, a double Stargate build and double upgrades before you expand because the longer it takes you to get a good economy, the more behind you're going to be the entire time. This is where people get lost all the time in early stages of StarCraft, which is where they think they think you have to make army priority first and then sit on it. And all that does is it makes your supply plummet into the fucking ground while your opponent skyrockets. Like these supplies... They can. They seem like they might not be that drastic right now. Well, now it's starting. It's going to explode, though. This is just how the work. This is how it works when you get a good economy. One supply for the, is, is, it looks like you might be like, oh well, vibe. You're you're within like twenty supply of each other though, or like twenty five supply of each other. It's not that bad, dude. And it's it's still not great. You don't want to be twenty five supply down for no reason. But it's it's it, you could say it's not that bad. It's not. It's only twenty five supply, and then suddenly it becomes like eighty supply, before you know it, or like seventy supply. Like, look, this is already around 40 supply here. Now it's 50. Now it's 60. Now it's 70. Now it's 80. Now it's 90. This is what happens when you have a build that's inefficient. You just, your build just like, it's, it's like, 
the scene in Fast and the Furious when you got Vin Diesel driving against some other random guy that's not in the movie for more than five minutes and he hits the NOS button right off the bat and then Vin Diesel's like, too soon, Junior. He's trying to fucking hit this like uh, this like supply you know, army right off the bat and it's way too fucking fast. You cannot afford it right now. And then you just suddenly go like, like your, your your little like your momentum just like totally stifles after this because everything is just disrupted, and you can't keep up with like a solid macro opener. Which is why when the when the attack finally comes, it looks like this, right? And it's never going to stop coming either. Because what happened right after that? During that fight, what happened? It's still maxed out for Zerg. Zerg is still sitting on max army. So there's zero chance Protoss wins here. Because, because even if Protoss somehow killed this army, Wave 2 is already being made back at the base. And there's already also... Uh, there's already 53, 53 larvae sitting there, guys. There's already 53 larvae sitting there. And what does 53 larvae mean for people who don't understand that? Each larva represents one unit of hydra. And one hydra is two supply. So 53 larvae represents 106 army supply. I could lose 106 army supply and instantly in the snap of a finger, remax. You gotta prioritize that economy, dude. The first world champ is a beast of a teacher. Thanks, vibe. Yo, boats. Thank you very much for the bits. Much love. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Much love, dude. You just gotta get the fun. Like everyone just needs to get the fundamentals of what StarCraft Two actually is down first before progressing forward. Like if you don't like again, if you don't understand how to develop an economy yet, that's number one. That is by far the most important thing you need to understand to be able to progress as a player at this game. And we're again, we're just getting tons of examples of it through these low leagues and while we slowly increase the speed of what we're doing. So now we got a Terran player. Uh, 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 I just fell asleep with my headphones on and in my dream, Vibe told me and my friends of mine some of his beta gym concepts while we were having breakfast. <laughs> yeah. Can you pass the Fruit Pebbles? So, anyways, macro, 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 5SD, make sure you're doing efficiency, because efficiency beats not efficiency. <laughs> Thank you for the amazing content. Recently got into StarCraft, and your channel has taught me so much over the months. Appreciate you. Have a great day. Smile. Yo, thank you very much for the three uh, definition. Much love, man. I'm, I'm glad you like it, dude. I'm glad you're uh, into it. Okay, so the first Overlord, once again, is going to go to his base. Well, first of all, we're gonna, we're, we already have the Overlords moving. I'll just show you the Overlords again in a second. But we're going to take our natural right now. We're going to make drones behind it. <coughs> Second Overlord is going to sit in front of our natural. That way we can see shenanigans happening if like we get cannon rushed or bunker rushed or whatever. Whatever race is going to do whatever they want to do. This Overlord is going to go here. Spot the natural. Shift click onto the cliff. And we're gonna sit, we're gonna chill there, and we're good. Now we can make a pool, we'll go swimming in. True story. When I was a kid, and I used to go swimming at public pools a lot. Uh, one out of like every four times I would go, they, there was always a lifeguard with a whistle that would blow and get everyone out of the pool because someone actually took a crap in the pool. Like it was like a. I don't know why I'm telling you guys this. It's just, when I said pool, it just took me back for a second. I just remember, heard that whistle in my mind, and I'm like, get out! Oh my god! Don't let it touch you. <laughs> okay, anyway, sorry for that disgusting tangent. Let's get back to being a GM. Okay. Um, yep. And I was never the pool poop. I was never the PP, the pool pooper. That was never me. I was never the suspect for that, okay? I was a civilized boy. I didn't do it. 
I know someone out there thinks I did. I, they're like, because I brought the story up, and they're like, it must have been you. No, it wasn't. Okay, so does he have an expansion? No. He does not. So what are we going to do? Think about it. I won't even say it this time. I'll let you think about it, and I'll just do it, and you'll see if you're right. Ah, 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 just kidding. We make a spine crawler. That's all we do. Let's make a lair. Let's inject our hatcheries. Okay, we're making drones. Making drones, boys. Making drones. 5ST, 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 5ST. Okay, let's try and build a wall again this game. Let's show you how to build a wall again. So, connect your wall. This is obviously not buildable. This is bad because it's corner to corner. So let's build a wall right there off of the one overlap of the top left spot of the, of the warren. Let's drop it down by one overlap spot right there. Go down by one and one more. So now we have an opening right there in the doorway. And finally, if we need to, we can wall it off right here. See how there's overlap? See how there's overlap? Double overlap right there. And now we have a wall that only can be gone through through the queen right now. So this is now a full wall. This is a perfect wall versus like Zerglings or whatever. Not going to be super useful against Terran unless they go Hellions, but... It's still nice to practice it if you want to practice these things. We'll definitely be doing this a lot more throughout time. Uh, but yeah. So really, we definitely want to start working on our walling placements. And the reason why you need overlap... The reason why you need overlap, by the way... Like, for instance, like if I build a, a building right here... It's minor gas really fast. If I mine, or sorry, if I build a building like this, where this is a corner to corner block, see how that's corner to corner? If I say drone, go through that, it goes right through that. That's not a wall. That's really scary, right? Things can all in you. However, if you don't build it corner to corner, and instead you stack one little grid spot like that, and you say drone, go through that wall, it goes around the wall because it can't fit through it. That's why I, the way I built my wall, that's why I did that. You have to find overlap grid spots. If you don't, your wall is very puncturable. <clears throat> it's not actually a wall. It's a, it's a wall that's as good as like you holding your hands together to hold water like this. And the water just keeps pouring through your fingers and you're like, why? It's because it's, there's gaps. We're going to make another queen inject and we're, we're going to make another queen do a creep spread. This queen's going to come back and inject now. Inject. Inject. We made roaches, so now let's make drones. Let's also transfer some drones that were actually oversaturated there for a second, which is fine. Okay, let's grab our other gas in our main base and let's grab our hydrogen. Let's grab... Uh, our gas at our third base in just a second. Let's do maybe like one more inject really quick. And around a creep. 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 Let's make drones. Make gases. And now we're at 68 drones. That's great. That's great. That's super good. Now we can get two one upgrades. Let's get a couple overlords. Because we want to be able to go into... Uh, uh, more supply. We're going to supply block because we're about to make hydras to 120 supply. And look. Oh my god. He went battle cruisers. Okay, guys. Guess what? This is fucking... This is fucked, right? Oh, no. You know what we should do now? Let's make like two spores. Let's make like two spores. Let's start making hydras. And let's start making another hatchery. Like, go somewhere else. That was brutal. We can also saturate our gas here because we haven't done that yet. So three on each gas. We can also start making queens. Okay. 
So now it looks like he wants to attack this base. You can always transfuse your spore color if you want to. I mean, you can. Okay. So now it looks like we might be okay here. Uh, like I have a bit, uh, quite a bit of hydras now. A lot popped out here just a second ago. So now let's re-rally my, all my bases to my main. Let's make drones. So we're, we're not going to go mass hydras all game, guys. Am I freaking out? No. I have a lot of hydras already. Let's just A move my hydras towards where the BCs end up showing up and attacking me. A move that way. And now make drones. So all I did there was I made spore crawlers. I made drones. Or sorry, I made spore crawlers and hydras and queen because they all hit air. Because I was like, oh god, I don't have anything to hit air right now, really. And it's okay. I had nothing prepared when those BCs showed up. And look at me now. I'm fine. Okay. Make sure all my mineral lines are properly saturated. This one's good. This one is almost good again. Drone counts at 60. Not looking too hot, but we're, we're building up on it. Get another queen down here to inject my base again. Let's keep spreading creep. Keep spreading creep. And let's go ahead and get a la an infestation pit so we can go to a, a layer to a hive. We can upgrade that shit. Okay. So drones now are at 69. Looking pretty good again. Okay. He's actually attacking right there, but it looks like we're okay anyways. Let's grab these queens. And let's have them go spread creep. Meanwhile, we're at 120 supply again off of 60 workers. So now, you know what we should do? Go back into the same thing we do always before. Don't hesitate. Don't freak out and be like, what should I do? Don't think about it too hard. Just do what we do before. What do we always do when we're at 60, 66 drones-ish and 120 supply? What do we do? We make drones to 80, 8, 85 drones. That's what we do. So let's do that. We just made one full wave of drones right there. And we're already at 84. Now we're at 85. Or rather, now we're at 85. Okay, now we now you know what we do? Now we go back into making hydras. We didn't freak, I did not freak out at all here. There was no panicking. There's no like, oh my god, we're gonna die. Make hydras forever now. It's okay. Because look how much time our opponent's giving us to prepare everything right now. It's normal. We almost killed a BC and he went back to go do things like repair and fly home. Lots of time for us to do things like spread our creep, inject our hatcheries, make our drones, and yada, yada, yada. Okay, we need to actually fix the creep in the main base. Let's send one, one queen to go put a creep tomb in the main. We just made a few more overlords because, again, we don't want a supply block. And uh, we all we're trying to do right now is make hydras. That's all we're doing. We can even take one roach each and go left and right. Click, 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 click. Saturate our gas. Also, this guy has BC capabilities, so let's go ahead and throw down double spore there. Let's go ahead and throw down double spore here because he has BCs, and that's scary shit. Like that could happen again. Make more hydras. Yeah, it's big brain time. Yo, thank you very much, Rudy. Thank you, dude. Let's inject the hatcheries again. Inject the hatcheries again. Let's fix our economy as well while we're at it. In a second here. Go back to the main. Grab four. Go back to the natural, grab some, set them over here. Grab a couple of that, set them over here. Now every base is no longer in the red. We're looking wonderful. And we also just found out <coughs> the turn player's earliest base is actually probably right there. So let's act, because the reason why is because there's buildings there already and I can't, my roach just got like stuck. So let's aim move right here with my whole army. Get my army grouped up. And let's get ready to attack from top right in towards top middle, then go down into his natural. So spread creep while we're at it, while we're waiting. Okay, our army is pretty set up. It's all grouped together. So now let's go like this. A move, shift 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 A move. And I'm guessing where the walls are. I have no idea if this guy has walls or not. Like that might be a wall there. I don't know. If our units get fucked up, we'll do it. We'll fix it next time. Inject, inject. 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 Make hydras because we're still good on drones. We're still good on drones. Let's take another hatchery while we're at it. Let's even take a couple more gases. What's going on here? Okay, so we can rally our rally point right there. Just rally to where the that we're getting attacked. Okay, we can spread some creep while we're at it, while we're waiting. Spread some creep. Spread some creep. Spread some creep. 
Expect some creep. 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 And creep. And the bottom side needs some more creep. So let's put some more creep down there. Three tumor there. Let's come down here and like maybe do creep. 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 How's my base looking? Oh, we're fine. Let's fix my drones though. One, two, three. Click. 5S, one, two, three. Drones. Click. 5SD for a little bit. Click. And we're back again. We're good. That was fixed in seconds. Now let's make hydras. And we're maxed out. Hydra should be BCs. Yeah, buddy. Make a bunch of uh, injects. BC is pretty good. I don't know what this guy means by what he said, but uh, I'll just acknowledge what he said by saying something. <laughs> so that way he's not talking to nothing. That way I'm not being a dick and being silent. Hey, let's transfer some workers around. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. We just don't want it to be uh, red and inefficient. Okay, so let's select alarmy. A move. Shift A move. We're A moving towards his base. Oh, he's saying... Hydras shouldn't beat BCs, I guess is what he's saying. You're missing the point. You can just mass that shit and I can't, still can't win. I don't know. I don't know what to say there. I mean, I'm not gonna pick on this guy. It's totally fine. Uh, with that, like that right there, it's it's fine. I don't want to. I'm not gonna say shit. But let me now say some shit. No, <laughs> I'm just joking. I don't care. Yeah, the whole point is efficiency, right? I mean, that's exactly what it's supposed to be. You you want to know why? So here's here's the thing. Coffee. If you ever see this, okay, coffee. If you ever find my stream or ever see this, don't think. Well, BCs just can't beat Hydras. That's as simple as that. No, that's not at all what the point you should draw from this game. But, I mean, I, I would have explained that more, but he seemed kind of frustrated, so he left, and it's fine. Um, the point is, with doing anything inside StarCraft 2 inefficiently cannot beat anything else done efficiently. Like, you can't make BCs with low supply counts... And expect that to be the Zerg player who has a high supply. It's never, it will fucking never happen. Because it's low supply BCs. So again, here's an example again, right? Here's a for instance. Why did I make a spine crawler? Because my opponent didn't fast expand. My opponent prioritized the battle cruisers before expansion. And he's also going fucking gas. This is what I'm talking about, guys. I hate builds like this. Everyone does builds like this. Now, watch the supply. Watch the supply. Just look at the supply. Look at the supply. Somewhat close right now. Somewhat close. We're messing around with our Evo Chambers there for a second. I'm showing you guys the walling stuff. <coughs> and now look at the supply. Watch it. It's going to start getting crazy. Because again, the Terran player is putting so much emphasis on this Battlecruiser attack winning the game. It's putting way too much emphasis on this one attack. Look at the supply now. It's getting crazy. Supply is getting nutty right here. So he teleports in my base. And as he's in the base, right? Look, let's look at workers killed. Let's look, look at resources lost before it happens. Nothing had died. Nothing had died before the BCs got in the base. Nothing had died. And now, we're getting steamrolled by two BCs. People would freak out all the time here. Like, oh my god, 20 workers have already died. I didn't pull a single drone away from the mineral line. No drones were pulled. I've already lost 22 fucking units. And it's 1,300 resources worth of death right now. And right now, the BC player is probably feeling amazing. Like, yep, worth it. But would you think, after all the damage he just fucking did to me, that he still 
behind in workers, and he's still behind by fucking 16 army supply, or 16 total supply, rather. He's still behind. After all, like, even though he did a lot of damage there, he's still behind. It's not even like that was, it still has paid for it yet. This is definitely one of the better attacks that has happened up uh, to us in this video. And so far in Silver 2, I think this is the best, ver like, this is the best example of someone who over invests into a build, but then also does decent damage with it. Like, this is actually close. It's actually close to doing pro proper amounts of damage. It is close. But I mean, look, look, at, look at the total supply. We have 122 active available supply. That's depots he has to make to catch up to that. We have uh, still 92 to 65. We are cruising here at high supply. And then finally the BCs end up bailing and they're like, all right, I didn't lose anything. I, I'm, a, I'm Terran, I got my BCs, I teleported in and I flew out. I killed 1,700 resources worth of, the, of the Zerg stuff. I bet the Terran player is probably feeling amazing. He's like, you know what? That feels good. Like, I, I feel like I just fucked the Zerg up. Yet, Zerg is still ahead by 30 supply and also ahead by still a bunch of workers. And it's only getting more extreme. <laughs> and that was the first that was the first thing we killed which was his him sending 10 units 10 marines to their suicidal death but here's the real reason again right income i lost 1800 to 500 i lost 1800 to 500 and i'm mining almost triple his money uh, i'm almost mining triple his mineral income right now you can't fucking win if you're mining 1000 minerals and i'm mining 3000 minerals like you, you can kill, you can kill, you can do this shit twice in a row, three times in a row, and I'm still gonna fucking have a lot more. If like you wait too long, right? Because like, here's the thing, right? Do you do you think that this terror player, after doing an attack like that, where he saves both battle cruisers and he fucking wipes out my whole main base in terms of queens and drones, do you think he would be feeling like right now Zerg's maxed out? Probably not. It's probably not like, oh well, Zerg's definitely a. Uh, He's probably thinking to himself, I bet Zerg only has like 80 supply right now or like 75 supply because that was a really good attack. I got so much kills. I got 15 and 11 and Zerg killed nothing. Zerg only killed 10 Marines, which I don't even care about anymore because I'm not even going bio. It was just in case he, or he's still making Marines though. It's like, shit like right there, right? It's shit like that. Like why? It, it, it's just inefficient. Like it's just slowing down everything else. And the reason why the reason why someone that does a build like this feels like they need marines would be because this BC count at 11 minutes is actually really small. You could have more BCs at at almost 11. We'll just go to 11 minutes. Go exactly to 11 minutes. Let's round it off. You could have more BCs than six at 11 minutes if your build did not open double starport, double gas into an expansion. If instead your build was like opening up uh, maybe like some Marines with a bunker with a couple of tanks into triple command center and then triple starport or like double starport after you have triple command center. If you do that, suddenly then at 11 minutes, instead of having only six BCs, you would have like 13 or like 11. And you'd be, you'd be making them at a faster pace because it wouldn't be getting, you would not be making a C, or you wouldn't be making BCs oh, off of 36 SCVs. Yeah. You'd be making them off of probably like 80 SCVs. Don't make me say it. Say what? What are you gonna say? Say it. Cock. Thank you very much for the 13 months D4T. Much love. <coughs> Cock. Okay, and then now, and here's the situation, right? Yeah, BCs can't cannot beat Hydras when it's 100 supply versus 200 supply. It is that simple. Like, we're engaging a planetary and battlecruisers at the same time. And bunkers and tanks. And we just have more. And the, the beautiful thing is, is even, again, even if he wins this fight, even if he somehow wins this fight, look at my supply. I still fucking just remax all day
The last Hydra kills the last BC. And how much larva is sitting there? None now, because we just remaxed. And I think he, I think what he meant to say here was Hydras should not beat BCs. And uh, yeah, it's just it's it's not again, it's not Hydras beat BCs or BCs beat Hydras. It's economy beats no economy. This is such a perfect example, dude, of mindset of lower level player, and what you need to break yourself of if you want to grow as a player. Everyone thinks like this, like this unit beats that unit. No, it fucking doesn't. You can actually make units beat other units all the time based on how you use them. It's really down to 100 supply loses to 200 supply. Then yeah, that's a pretty fucking, that's a given. Anyways, I don't want to give him shit. Coffee, you're fine. Uh, I don't want to, I'm not trying to, okay, I'm not trying to pick on anyone. I'm not trying to pick on anyone. Sometimes it might sound like I am, but I'm not. Just the point of macro beats no macro. That's the whole golden rule of StarCraft. Is this Silver League still? Yes. These videos are taking forever to make each time, so. I mean, I'm not cruising through. I'm only getting... Guys, look at this. I'm only getting, like, fucking 20 MMR a win. Or, like, sometimes, like, 30 MMR a win. I'm not earning, like, 100 MMR a win or, like, 150 MMR a win. Which means it only takes like three wins to get out of these leagues, uh, so like these they're, they're gonna take a while. It takes like ten wins to get out to get one promotion in ten games. If I'm playing games at like thirty minutes a game, fucking long. Okay, well guess what? I think that's our promo right there. <laughs> Zerg series was cut a little short, guys. We had two quitters. I'm sorry. I apologize. I think that's probably gonna be a promo right there. Ooh, we're close. Never mind. We can get one more chance. What happens if you put your hand in a blender? You get a handshake. <laughs> That's actually uh kind of funny. Almost made me laugh. You made me laugh on the in you made me smile on the inside. Because it's kind of punny. clever I can't believe this guy is complaining that BCs don't beat Hydras when it's five BCs against 100 Hydras it's it's okay though because to be fair again players in lower leagues don't think about the game that way that's why uh, guys what if you're like vibe why are you such a fucking broken record with this macro thing good god can we talk about something else and the answer is no we can't yet. We will talk about other stuff eventually, but we can't talk about anything else yet because players in lower leagues don't really gr like grasp that concept that we just went through right there with that Terran player. They all think the other way. They all think it's units, not economy. And I'm dead serious. You can get... I could literally... Believe, believe me when I say this. I'm not going to do this right now, so it's really, it's really up to you to believe... You can either believe me or not. It's really up to you, but it is a fact. I could get from bronze to diamond league using any units that if they at least have an auto attack, I could use any units and get to diamond league purely off of having macro. That's it. Well, I mean, I might have to do some clever shit like make a bunch of static D here and there. Uh, if you if it was the unit was like a shitty unit, like a fucking phoenix or a corruptor or something, like can't hit a building or a ground unit, uh, like auto attack wise. But realistically, you totally can do that. Just by out complaining that BCs aren't strong enough, I have this to say. <laughs> yeah, BCs are pretty good, honestly. <laughs> They're pretty good. That unit does not need a buff. <laughs> Thank you for the uh, dollar dono, Mike Oxenormous. Nice. Yeah, I'd like you to get back again, that name. Mike Oxenormous. Okay, let's gotta get our drones. Make our drones, guys. Let's go ahead and make our drones.
Okay, so what are we doing with this overlord? Oh, We're supposed to be scout yeah. and then shift click the mineral line. Or, no, the, sorry, scout and then shift click the uh, cliff, right? Does this guy have a natural? The answer is later than mine, but yes, he has one, so we'll, we'll play fast and loose with it. It's okay. I mean, it's still there, so we'll just say fuck it. We don't need to build a spine crawler. It's okay. If there was no natural there at all, I 100% would be building one. Okay, so let's make our uh, lar lair. Let's make our... Uh, let's make our... Uh, you know, our lair. Let's make our third queen. If you if you're in the situation where there's an overlord in your base as well, I'm totally okay with you killing it. Just make sure if you try to kill it, only try to kill it if you 100% guarantee it's about to die. If you have to sacrifice larva inject, but don't ever sacrifice larva inject if it's not even close to dying. Always prioritize your larva over the overlord. The biggest mistake you can do in a ZVZ is attack an overlord. For too long, and then finally when you inject, your, your queen has like 45, 45, 44 energy or something. And you're like, whoops, I haven't injected, and now I missed a full round of inject. And an inject is more value than an overlord. I know it's nice to kill shit, but it's even worse if you don't make shit. It's a, it's a, it's a fallacy of thinking you're ahead. It's like, it's like the guy last game, thinking he's ahead because he made BCs kill my main base, and suddenly he's got 90 supply versus fucking 190 supply. He's like, what? What the hell is this game? Macro beats all as long as you do it properly. Micro is a, micro comes into play once you can actually macro and then also micro. Like, you can macro while microing. Okay, so we're making our third hatchery. We're going to make some safety roaches. Let's get roach speed and weapons. <coughs> Okay, so we have roaches now, and now we're making- we have a few safety roaches like we normally make. We need to get our fourth queen so we can have another, uh, creep spreader. Keep injecting our hatcheries, keep injecting our hatcheries. And now our third base is getting saturated. Let's put this queen on our third. So that way we have our hatchery being ready to be injected right away as it's finished. Make like a couple more overlords. And let's go ahead and start a hydrogen as well while we're at it. We can also start a second evo chamber. Okay, so we're getting attacked. So here we go, guys. Safety roach time. This is why we make safety roaches. We don't have time to go hydras now. Make roaches. We're getting aggressively attacked hardcore. Make roaches. So if you can help it, you can try and save your drones if you're waiting for a second. You can let them die as well. I mean, I don't want you to let them die over for realistically, but if it comes down to it and you have, you're have you not fast enough to save them, I understand it's okay. You will eventually become that fast. Now let's go ahead and A-move the roaches down here. A-move our roaches down to the area. And now it looks like we have enough, so let's go back to making drones again. And we can transfer our drones back to the third. And why did I have that many roaches that fast? I had six roaches and he had like 13. He shows up and he runs me over. And then he starts killing a bunch of drones. And why did I just run his army over in seconds after that? Because I did not stare at that and panic and go, what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? I immediately made roaches. That's, what, that's why you make safety roaches. That's the whole point as to why you make safety roaches. It buys you time to make more if your opponent does something aggressive and you're not ready for it yet. Okay, so let's take another base. Don't you just hate it when your cat wakes you up like this? Meow. 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 Oh my god. Meow. 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 Wake up, you asshole, and 5 s 2 e e e Yes. Hate it. Happens all the time. Okay, we're injecting. Let's spread some creep tumors. Creep. Creep. Failed our hatchery. 
Okay, and now we can start making hydras. Uh, up to 120 supply, which is what we're at now. And now let's saturate our fourth base. Transfer some drones as well around the bases because uh, we're getting oversaturated. So, inject. 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 Make a bunch of drones. Spawn some creep. Spawn some creep. Spawn some creep. Spawn some creep. Why am I also making drones right now, guys? Why, why are you doing that vibe? Because I did it. Hydras to 120 supply, and now I'm making drones again. Going back into the same sequence I've been going into repeatedly every game. It always falls back into the same repetitious cycle we always go into. It doesn't change every game. The only thing that changes is while we're dying, we make units. And then as soon as we feel like we're not dying anymore because I just made units, we go right back into the cycle we were in before and try to readjust into what it was. So now I have 88 drones. We can make a couple gases here. We can make a infestation bit here. And now we're at a nice cool crisp 85 cool crisp 85. And let's make more overlords and get ready to go into more hydras again. Okay, let's spread some creep again. Spread some creep again. Make some hydras. Spread some creep again. Spread some creep again and again and again and again. Have this queen now go inject the hatchery, because uh, I have a lot of active creep timbers, so I think we're okay there. And let's saturate our gases. We grab six, we put three, shift clicked off three, put three on this one, and put two on this base now, so we're perfect. Maybe we should take another base as well, because, I mean, more bases are going to mine out soon, so we want to make sure we can actually saturate properly. Make some more hydras really fast, and then we're good. Make some more overlords so we can max out. It's because we're about to supply block. We just injected all four of our hatcheries. We can do another round of creep. 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 No creep tumor there. Oh, there it is. Creep tumor. Creep. And creep. Nice. Add that into my control group. Shift five. Let's go to our roaches and go, hey, roaches. A move, A move, A move. On the right side, end of the roach. On the left side, A move, A move, A move. We got a hive coming up. Let's also take a lurker den. In case this turns into a base trade. Lurker den, super good. Super good. Okay, this guy's going mutilisk. So what are we going to do here? Let's make a couple of spores. Let's make like three spores per middle line. Fuck it. Because, or, uh, yeah, whatever. Let's say anywhere between one and three. Three is definitely on the safe side. Three spores per middle line. One, two, three. One, two, three. Now we just made spores at every fucking base. Now let's take look at our drone count. It's not great. Make drones. Now it's great. Now let's select our army and go attack right there. Shift attack there. Shift attack there. And why did I do that? Because the furthest exposed base I just scouted was that base right there. This base looks like it's going to die. And it's okay. Do I really care? Not really. I mean, it is what it is, right? That base, unfortunately, looks like it's going to be denied. Drone count still good. Now let's make... Spore, spore, spore at the space. We can even take another base here while we're at it. And we can even go spore, spore, spore. How many drones are we going to be at now? We can also take double gas here. Double gas. Drone count's not looking too great again, but now suddenly we're back up again. Super good. So we're not, like, as soon as he reveals, oh, he's got air, we're not going to let him just fucking kill our base indefinitely the whole time. We're just going to add in some spores at our bases. To make sure that this doesn't become a problem for the future. So it always is hard for him to like multi-prong multi me or attack me. And then in the meantime, behind that, we can just go into like remaxing on hydras and stuff like that. And making sure we're injecting our hatcheries and injecting our hatcheries. These kinds of things. <coughs> and a big tip as well. If you put... Here's a, here's a huge tip, okay? If you put... If you put multiple static defensive structures in your mineral lines, okay? If you put multiple static these structures in your middle line to fight someone's air units, it's a very good idea to not do something like this. Like if I say put three spores in the base, don't go to your base and be like, okay, you said three spores, spore crawler, spore crawler, spore crawler. That's not good. There's a reason why that makes sense when you would do that. And the reason why it makes more sense to spread them out is because your army is still defensive and you're looking for supporting spores with your army. We'll talk way more about that when we get higher level. For now, that's not even a concept we understand at all, okay? We're not even worried about that right now. 
We'll talk about that when we get into like a master's level ZVZ when we're going like roaches and the other guy's going like mutas. That's when it, things like that could matter. Or like when you're a Zerg and they're going like Mass Phoenix in Masters League and you're going for drones and queens and stuff. Spreading spores out then makes sense because you cover, like everywhere they go, they're getting t like tapped by a spore and you, you reinforce spore but with mobile army. That's why that would make sense. Again, we'll talk way more about that concept later. Let's drop it now. Not really focus on it. Let's talk about why this makes sense. Why does this make sense when they're closer together around the hatchery? It makes sense because if a muta engages a spore crawler, it doesn't engage one spore crawler and that's it. It engages three. If he attacks that spore crawler, that spore crawler, or that spore crawler, all the spore crawlers will shoot the mutas. Mutas cannot attack the spore crawler from like over here. They have to attack the spore crawler from like right there. And if they attack this spore from the far left, or if they attack this spore from the far top right, there's a chance that these two spore colors might not have enough range to help each other. There's a chance, there's a, because the hatchery's in the middle, right? But if this guy just A moves the base, and he like, which is what he's probably going to do, right? He's probably going to go for the middle line or A move the base if he's going to go air like that. And if he just if his mutas kind of like fly in and then come to a stop to start fighting spores, his mutas will most likely fly in like here, 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 and they'll come to a stop like this. They'll come to a stop like right about right here. And start smashing the spore crawler. And all three spores will start shooting all of his mutas all day. And he'll take way more losses than he wants to. So it's super effective to have your spore crawlers somewhat close together. Same thing here. Same thing here. Always close-ish close -ish together. Same thing here. It not only covers the mineral line and the gases. It covers each other. It's not like spore, spore, spore that's way that, that covers the middle line but it does not cover the other spores so we could kill one spore and suddenly you're compromised on one side because you only had to fight one spore but if, if every time he has to engage the base he has to engage all your spores at once that sucks it makes it way harder to break your base prop to break someone's base properly um and so on and so on and anyways let's go back for a second let's look at the roach attack when he showed up uh with his roaches and let's see what supply looked like right it's not time to panic there it's time to react and then make drones once we feel confident. And the only way, honestly, here, here's the crazy thing. In Silver League, we re really can't know. It's just what you feel like, right? Because in Silver League, our scouting is super basic. But here's a cool tip for Zerg players. Okay, we'll, we'll talk a lot more about this. We'll talk a lot more about this once we get to, like, Diamond League. But here's a cool tip. If you actually were using a Zergling, which we'll use a lot later, and we're not ready for it yet, but once we are, if I had a Zergling run into my opponent's base... Look at my base. Get a good look at my base, okay? Look at it. Stare at it. It's like one of those pictures where it's like, spot the differences. Yeah. It's big brain time. Yo, thank you, Rudy, for the 100 bits. Thank you, man. Big brain. It's like, it's like you're comparing your expansion to their expansion. What are the differences? Can you name a few differences between my base and his, my natural and his natural? What are they? Here's ours. Now let's go to his. If I had a Zergling go up here, it was like going up the map. And it was cruising all the way to his base. And I go up his ramp. And I'm like, let's say I got in there. What are the differences between that natural right there and ours? What are the differences? Let's now click his, click our, click, click from his to ours. And now go back to his. The difference is, it's fucking zero drones here. So if a Zerg doesn't make drones, they're going to make units. And that's how you can scout a Zerg player in the future. Now they're going to attack you. Because they don't make economy. They instead use their larva to make army. And you can like scout that and go, oh, I have like 12 more drones than him. If I start making units now, I can kill his units as he gets to my base and maintain a 12 worker lead. Because I scouted it right away when he started making army instead. Because he's not making drones anymore. Uh, that's how ZVZ kind of goes at higher level. But again, right now in Silver League, I just wanted to get, give you guys an idea of what it's like at higher level. But we're not doing that right now. It's not even remotely close to what we're doing. We're just worried about doing the build. Because again, I say it all the time. You can do anything efficiently and beat someone who does anything inefficiently. That's how it goes. And our opponent is doing a build that is super aggressive roaches with no economy. And I'm doing a build that is super greedy drones on a third base. Look at the economy right now, guys. I have 42 fucking drones versus 19. If this was an actual Masters level game, I would 100% be dead. Because if I was getting all in by a guy with 19 drones and I made 42 of them, I would have like 40 fucking lings running in my doorway right now killing me. Or like followed by like 10 roaches. I'd be like, okay, I'm super dead now. 
But again, that's not happening right now because this is inefficient. There's not no queen injecting the natural at all. There's no queen injecting the main at all. This queen's chilling. He's making cream tumors instead. It's it's shit like this that you need to like understand. Like look, look at this. The queen's prioritizing the overlord, right? That's why I told you not to do as well. He's doing a, a, a creep tumor. These are the things that you have to not like. I don't. I always feel like I always pick on people. Uh, I'm not trying to. I'm just saying there's differences between efficiency and non-efficiency, and this is non-efficiency. There's a reason why, for no for no reason, we're already having this big supply discrepancy here. I'm looking, vibe. Just look at it. So watch when the guy gets to our base. Look at it. He shows up, right? The second he gets here and starts fighting me, he's still down by 22 supply. Nothing has died. I killed his overlord, I guess, because it was literally flying in the middle of my base. But nothing else besides that has died, yet he's down by 22 supply, and it's just because of inefficiencies in the build. And then he shows up with... He actually only has 9 roaches to my 6. It's a little bit closer than what I assumed it was. But he still wins this fight. Roaches actually... Here's the thing. Here's the crazy thing. Nine roaches just killed six roaches, and eight roaches didn't die. So that was a great exchange for him. I was like, holy fuck, that's a super good attack. And now he starts killing drones and shit. Look at that. We just took a fuckload of damage right there. That's terrible, right? And then a roach spawns over there. He's target firing my hatchery. But we made roaches while he was here because we had safety roaches, and they bought us time to make more roaches. And now suddenly we made another round of roaches, and now we're at a... Even though we're the ones who have lost, uh, right now at this point, we're the ones who have lost 1,200 supply, or uh, sorry, 1,200 resources versus only 500. We're negative 700 resources worth of stuff. In terms of loss, we're still way ahead because, again, we're mining way more than he is. It's always the mining. It's not, it's not what's lost. It's what's gained. And now we're crushing worker count or we're crushing uh, overall supply. <laughs> we're running away with this game right now. We're running away with it. And it's double supply again at this point. So it's just efficiency versus non-efficiency. Like half mineral line saturated with full gas income and undersaturated mineral line with full gas income. This is the kind of shit you can't do, right? If you want to play efficient, that is. And if you want to play efficient, that's your only way. The only way you're going to make it to platinum realistically is if you, if you learn to start playing efficiently. That's the all. That's the fucking key right there. That's all it is. Then four meters come out. So again, it's one of those things, right? Where you could say, okay, well, this build was really heavy on the gas. And what was the gain? You got two, two upgrades. But there's not really an advantage there because we also have good upgrades here on our roaches and hydras. Uh, so the upgrades are similar right now. Uh, for both players, we're actually at, we're actually currently holding an advantage at the moment because it's one one versus two one for us. Uh, so that's not like this isn't a huge deal. It's really about the mutas, I would say, because there's also a layer and infestation pit, and we also have a infestation pit and a hive on the way. So it, again, it's really about the mutas. The mutas are the only argument you could really put in here that to go well. What is this heavy gas build gonna sup uh, gonna support here? It's this. And what do these mutas accomplish? They kill, like, a drone. And they kill a hatchery, right? And by the time they can do anything else, we already have defense everywhere. And now we're protected against any future muta attacks. And then there's no way that his base can hold this army. Right here. This big, fat push we're pushing into his base with. It's just too much. Efficiency beats non-efficiency. That's all it is for now. That's all it is for now. And again, don't be fooled, guys. Don't be fooled and think that this is as efficient as it gets. We're not ready for, mac for micro yet. It gets a whole lot more efficient than what it already is. We can play so much faster than this. And what are we going to do now that we're silver one in the next video? We're going to play a little bit quicker than we were before. Overall, our average max out is still going to be around 1030. But again, we're still we're, we're getting better at it. We're trying to get faster at it. And now, like I was saying at the beginning of this video, if it took us 25 seconds in Silver 3 to get the macro cycle done, and in Silver 2, it took us 24 seconds to do it, now in Silver 1, maybe it'll take us 23 seconds to do it. Like, try to keep 
getting better and faster and better and faster at everything you're doing, and you build yourself up overall as a player in every way to handle more as you go. So, and, and, and like you, what you actually do things you can handle, not shit you can't handle. So you don't put yourself in situations where your brain just fucking melts out your ears, and you're just like, "What is going on? I don't even know what to do now." A move. I'm panicking. You want to know why I don't panic? Because I have a plan, right? I know what I'm. I know what to do. And if you develop yourself with a plan as well, of like, of not even just like a plan of attack where it's like, okay, I need you to do the most 200 IQ attack that has ever been fucking made here in this game. Do something that's ever been seen before because otherwise they know what you're doing. I'm not saying anything like that. It has nothing to do with attacking. It has everything, it has everything to do with understanding how to develop a build. I'm going to give you another example, okay? Here's another example. Think about a game like Dota. This is the last thing I'll say in the, in the video. Think about a game like Dota. Macro in Dota is like the same thing. It, like in StarCraft, it, mac, macro to StarCraft is the same thing as buying items and getting skill points in Dota. Okay? So imagine if you had a guy playing Dota. And he's in the stage of the game where he doesn't know how to macro properly. Which means he starts the game off and he's like, I don't even know what to buy on my hero right now. I don't know what to buy on my hero. And I also don't even know what skills I should be getting. I don't know how to, I don't know what kind of build I should be doing right now. I have no idea. Well, what should that guy do? He should probably first do something easy when it comes to like farming money, like kill creeps and shit and like build himself, build up his income and like learn how to build his build properly. And then suddenly then once he has, once he actually knows how to build a build and he no he no longer hesitates and looks at shops and shit and is like, I don't know what to buy. He just knows what to buy. He's way better off because now he actually can focus on micro. It's the same thing in StarCraft 2 where if you don't know what to fucking build and how to build it and instead you focus on micro, you're not going to do shit. Because a guy in StarCraft 2 who focuses on micro before he actually knows how to macro is like a guy in Dota who like picks a hero and gets the whole fucking wrong ability first where it's, a, it's like the horrible way to play the hero. And then he buys like a fucking... Uh, like a bad item on him as well, which makes no Silver sense. One. Yeah, it's big brain time. He, he buys an item on the hero that makes no sense as well. Then he like runs in the middle of nowhere and he's like, I'm going to kill the other team, guys. And his hero just runs out there and gets bitch slapped and dies. And then everyone on the team's like, dude, what are you doing? Fucking, what the hell is that? And he's like, and then he thinks like, oh, I lost that fight because I didn't use the, uh, I didn't actually like use the ability at the right time. I should have used it at a different time. It's like, no, you just, why the fuck do you even have that ability in the first place? And why do you have that item or no items? What do you expect to accomplish here? There's nothing you're going to do. It's, it's the fucking same thing as StarCraft when you have no economy and no army. What do you expect to do with that? Fucking nothing. You literally can't, you just die. So if you play against someone who actually knows how to macro versus someone who doesn't, you die. If you don't know how to macro. That's, again, that's why I stress so hard. The foundation for you as a player is legit your macro. Anyways, I, I hope maybe some more people uh, are like, whoa, I didn't think about it that way. But it's fucking true, man. Um, macro is so important in StarCraft 2. It is mandatory to be able to play the game any further than like Gold League. Uh, you could probably get the Gold League as like your capped league if you do weird builds and efficiently and just you always play inefficient. I think gold's your limit. You have to have at least some form of efficiency to play Platinum. And then you have to have good efficiency to play Diamond. Uh, anyways, guys, thanks for watching. Thank you for watching. I will see you in the next video uh, for Silver 1. We're almost gold. I'll see you in Silver 1, guys. <coughs> Until then, much love. Take it easy. Thank you for watching, and good luck. Peace, guys.